watching the days go by. I got you on my mind. And I need you by my side. Hello, friends. Thanks for watching the main ingredient. I am the Pastor Chef Michael Newton, and I am here with a couple of good friends of mine. We have Pastor Craig Raymond. And we have Pastor Michael Braden here with us today. And in a moment, we'll give them some time to tell a little bit about themselves and what they do. But first, for food, right? So our recipe this month is our savory sausage and peppers. This is a really good, inexpensive meal that you can make for the whole family. Um, first, we start with two pounds of Italian sausage. Um, we start with a large red pepper, a yellow pepper, and a green pepper. Um, we get an onion, and what we want to do is we want to julienne all of these up. Now, if you want to make it easier, you can pre-cook the uh, Italian sausage in the oven, cook it about halfway, and then that makes it easier to slice, and then you can saute all the ingredients up and set it to the side. Then what you want to do is you want to begin to get a pound of ground beef and brown that up, and leave it in the pan because you want to use the juices and add flavor to your sauce. And after you brown the ground beef, you want to add some garlic, you want to add your tomato sauce, whatever kind you choose to use. You want to add a tablespoon of, uh, of oregano, a tablespoon of basil, and a tablespoon of thyme. Um, you want to add two tablespoons of sugar. And what the sugar does is it breaks down the acidity of the tomatoes and makes it easier uh, on the tummy for some of us. Um, and so you wanna get all of those things and you wanna marry them all together. And once you get them all sauteed up and married together, you wanna allow it to simmer for about 30 minutes. And so this is how we do it. It's great, it's delicious, and it'll be good for your whole family. And it's economical. And so this is how it's done. And you can go to the main ingredient, uh, yourmainingredient.com and check the website and get the full recipe. And while you're there, be sure to pick up a coffee mug, a t-shirt, um, we got bags, uh, different items uh, that represent the main ingredient. And all of these proceeds continue to support the work that we do here, not just on this show, but in um, the communities in which we serve. And so, all right, now since we got that out of the way, let us dive in. And now we're, uh, we're getting ready to celebrate uh, the Resurrection Sunday, right? The resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And over the past couple of weeks, God has been really dealing with me regarding my faith um, and our faith as a whole. Right now, it seems like many of us are in the midst of a season where we have become dry in our faith or in our walk with God. You know, I feel that there's also a hunger out there for God and for the renewal and revival of our spirits. So that's why we're here. That's what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I got I just want to say, like, I get it. You know, I get it. It's been a rough couple of uh, years. You know, there's been a lot of things that we've had to deal with. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But first, Pastor Craig, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do and what's the passion behind what you do. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Glad to be here yeah. with you today. Uh, my name is Craig Raymond, and I uh, I have a wife, Ashley, daughter, Julia, and so I am a, a husband and, and father, and uh, first and foremost, Christ follower. Yes. And uh, but I spend a lot of my time uh, serving pastors and churches, and and trying to help develop uh, leaders. Uh, that, that want to see uh, God's kingdom come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so I work with the Great Lakes region of the Wesleyan Church and uh, I help uh, organize our, our staff team and also uh, serve churches. So um, I, I wanted to mention this because uh, none of you out there would know this, but um, Craig um, was part of a leadership team with the uh, Great Lakes region, and I believe you all have a leadership cohort going now? Yeah, we do one or two a year. Mm -hmm. So would you just tell us a little bit about um, you know, what that is and what's the goal behind um, this leadership cohort? Yeah, one of the things that uh, we want to do is, is inspire and equip uh, ministry leaders. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, folks that, that sense a calling, maybe they're already in ministry, but uh, need further equipping. And so once or twice a year, we, we have a, a cohort uh, that gets together and really we learn from each other. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that uh, 
the the mission rises and falls on spirit anointed mm -hmm. leadership and we need each other we need to continually grow and uh, there's some younger folks that are on fire yeah. for the Lord that want that desperately want to go after the mission mm -hmm. but just need uh, some basic leadership development so that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, um, I was part of that leadership cohort, and um, it actually helped me with developing uh, this fresh expression of the main ingredient, giving me the confidence that I could actually um, take leadership over this, you know, and, and it worked great for me. It did great things for me. Um, so I'm glad that you're doing that work, and I, I'll be praying that you continue uh, to, to be a blessing to those who are a part of that. So Pastor Michael, tell us a little bit about um, who you are, what you do, and what's the passion behind what you do. Yeah, so what's going on, everybody? My name is Michael Braden. I am uh, one of the assistant pastors at Kenwood Community Church in our Connect, Care, and Grow department. And basically what that is, is it oversees um, our discipleship and our benevolence and kind of care areas in the church. And it's a big passion for me because my I love equipping Christians uh, growing in their faith. I love to help them learn more about God, deepen their relationship with God, and I get to do that day in and day out, and I love it. Yeah, so um, in addition to that, you have a podcast, right? Yes. So one thing that we like to do, right, we highlight food, we highlight relationships, but we also highlight things that people are doing um, within the community of believers um, and ways to go after non-believers as well. And so tell us a little bit about your podcast and um, the things that you're doing through that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a podcast through our church called The Most Segregated Hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, basically what it is, we look at issues that go on in our culture around us, also in the church specifically, and we look at them through a multi-ethnic uh, worldview. Mm -hmm. So we, we kind of noticed before we put it together that there are a lot of Christian podcasts that may talk about multi-ethnic, mm -hmm. but only as an episode or two. Right. But we say, what does it look like if we look at all areas of the Christian life through a multi-ethnic worldview and kind of give people safe space where they can hear ideas they may not think of mm -hmm. or, you know, get to hear from people that they don't normally interact with. So it's been really fun to kind of just kind of peel back those layers in our culture yeah. and see, you know, what does that mean coming from a multi-ethnic uh, mindset? And it's, it's been really cool so far. What's that called again? The most segregated hour. And so if somebody okay. wanted to, uh, to, to catch that, how would they? Yeah, um, you can find that on our church app, which is called MyKCC. You can also find it on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and uh, Stitcher. Hmm. So that's great. Um, just great conversation. And, you know, um, we started off talking about uh, faith, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and struggling with faith or the flames, flames of faith have been uh, doused out. And, um, you know, these dry spaces and dry seasons that some of us may be going through or some of us may have been in. And I was thinking about this passage of scripture as I was uh, as we was coming together with the content for this show and Psalms uh, chapter 51 uh, verse 10 says, create in me. A clean heart, oh God, renew a loyal spirit within me. Renew a loyal spirit within me. Don't banish from me your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and make me willing to obey you, man. Yes. Man, that's a powerful scripture, you know. And so uh, from that, right, this is a question I'll ask both of you. Um, and I know this to be crucial for our audience, right? We know that both of you all are pastors and active in ministry right now, but we all, right, even as pastors, uh, have experienced a dry season in our lives, right? Seasons where we thought God wasn't responding or we felt distant from God and, and felt like God was just not uh, hearing us or we weren't connected to him, whatever that case may be. Could you recall a time, uh, Pastor Craig, where you felt distant from God and um, tell us about that? Yeah, I, one of the most interesting things that happened to me, uh, I, I'm a second uh, career minister, and so I was a financial advisor uh, before I was a pastor. And so I felt called to the ministry, uh, God opened the door, and I took it, and it was very clear that it was Him, and it was great. Uh, but two years in, I remember feeling like I was showing up at church every day I worked at the church mm -hmm. and it it was actually shocking to me uh, as a fairly new pastor that I could go to church and I could do all these things in Jesus name mm -hmm. with it with good intentions and not feel at all connected to it mm. that that's even possible uh, I think 
for most of us that are have been in ministry for very long, we realize that yeah, that we're not immune to that, we're not above that. Uh, but I remember early in my ministry, just uh, it, it wasn't like a, a sad, depressing time. But I just realized that uh, for some reason, I'd allowed uh, doing the work of Christ mm -hmm. uh, to sort of uh, make me feel like I was sort of close to Christ, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then He, God in His grace, sort of lifted that veil and said, "Hey." Buddy, you're going through the motions here, but we're not super connected. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know. Yeah, one of my mentors used to tell me, say, Michael, you have to be careful because you can actually lose Christ in the midst of serving him. Mm -hmm. You can lose Christ in the midst of serving him. And, and that guy is past me. <laughs> so, but yeah, so you, you know, I, like you could get so wrapped up in the doing and the doing and the doing that, that you could forget to be, right? And so if we're experiencing this, experiencing this as pastors like what do you say to the person who uh the flames of their faith have never been ignited like you know i i'm not even a dry season i don't even know what a dry season is but like i have no faith and so what do you say to a person like that like how do you connect with someone um that's in that space well i think the first step is just uh to love them mm -hmm. to to, to show them Christ uh, and, and and to sort of show them your faith I think I think the the beauty of the main ingredient just the premise of like having a meal mm -hmm. sit down over a meal and I think you know like borrow my faith I, I'll, I'll let me share my faith and um, you know I don't feel like you have to convince them I, I kind of like to say it's go tell it on the mountain, not go sell it on the mountain. But um, I think letting people uh, hear and see you live out that faith. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's starting from absolute scratch, uh, they need to see it in our actions, in our love. That's good, that's good. So yeah, Pastor Mike, um, you know, same question. Uh, could you recall a time in your life where you felt distant from God? Yeah, absolutely, I, I feel kind of one of the false assumptions with pastors is that because we're pastors, we don't go through things like that. And I feel like it's probably the complete opposite. I feel like a lot of pastors struggle with that because it is a part of our job. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for us to kind of blend the difference between what God has called us to do in our relationship with him. You know, Craig was saying, you know, you can go to church all the, all the time and you're not actually, are you actually there to worship God or are you just doing the nine to five, right? It's the same with you know, pastors, when we're preparing sermons, right? It's the only time you're in God's word is when you're about to preach, right? We need to be in it ourselves also outside of preaching. So it's very hard to, to kind of define those distinctions and say, yeah, that's what I do. But what about myself spiritually, right? We have to feed ourselves. And, you know, I, I recall when I first started getting into ministry, you know, I was confident this is what God has called me to do. This is where he's placed me. But I recognize that over time, I started to fall in love with the work or mm -hmm. what was happening. Yeah. And, and I realized, man, like, you know, why isn't, why am I not feeling as fulfilled or excited about what's going on? And I feel like God really convicted me. Like, you know, you're falling in love with what I called you to do, but not right. with me. Right. And like that hit me. Um, you know, I read in a book once, I think it was, a, I think it's discovering God by Henry Blackaby, but he talks about how we often ask God uh, what we're supposed to do, but not how we're supposed to do it. Mm -hmm. So once we get the what vision, we just run off and we go do what we're called to do, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 we're supposed to continuously walk through life with God. It's not a, I've given you your instructions, now go. It's, I'm giving you your instructions and now I'm walking along with you through it. But a lot of times we just take it and run and that's where we, that unfulfillment comes in and we get those dry seasons because we just take it and we try to do it without God. Mm -hmm. And I, I know I'm guilty of that. Yeah, I, um, you and me both, uh, you know, as a chef, a lot of things that I did was performance based. Mm -hmm. um, and early on in my faith walk, I thought, okay, as long as I'm able to perform, then I'm good with God, right? And, and, and Mick told me, you know, he was like, well, what happens when you stop performing, right? Are you no longer good with God? Mm -hmm. And so when I think about, you know, these dry seasons and I think about, uh, just, you know, the flames of our faith being doused out. Like myself, um, I found, you know, I was in this season where I felt like I had just plateaued. 
you know, Craig um, was with me early on in my faith, and and like I, I I was on the skyrocket, right? Like I was pure the first couple years, like you know, uh, I, I was out of there, and then I found myself into a place where I just plateaued, and I found that what happened was I, I think I may have lost Christ in the midst of serving Him. Mm. I was doing, 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 but I forgot to be, you know, and um, it wasn't that I had lost faith in Christ, right? It wasn't that I um, no longer believed. It's just like I, I, I no longer had that motivation or I no longer had that fire, that passion, you know what I'm saying, that burned within me when I first believed. And so when the scripture says renew mm -hmm. and, you know, renew my spirit within me, I'm like, that's where I was at. And so I asked God, I said, okay, how do I get to a place where I'm able to go higher, right? I want to go higher with you, God, right? And Holy Spirit told me, it wasn't an audible thing, but he told me, say, in order for you to go higher, you have to go deeper, mm. In order for you to go higher, you have to go deeper. You must go deeper in fellowship with me, with Jesus, and with God, and with the body of believers. You have to go deeper with those who don't believe, right? You have to go deeper in your prayer life. You have to go deeper in your worship. And the deeper you go, then the higher you go, right? Then I got to thinking about those who, you know, the, 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 the flames of their faith uh, were, were just flickering or they've never been ignited. And I said, okay, well, how can... Um, your faith, right? They call it deconstructing your faith. How can your faith be deconstructed or how can you, you know, not have that flame, um, you know, ever ignited? And what I realized was, um, and you said this, Pastor Craig, in, in a roundabout way, is like uh, most people see Jesus in other people. Like the first time I saw Christ was in Pastor Mick. Mm. And he gave me an example of, you know, who Christ is. Well, what it means to follow Christ. And what I realized was, is that I think that we have gotten into a season where the Christ that we're showing people is a Christ that we've made up and not the Christ from the Bible. Hmm. Right. We're showing them the Christ that fits our stuff. Right. That justifies our behavior. And we're not showing them the Christ from the Bible and say, that's what Christ is. I don't want no parts of that. You know what I mean? And, and my, my, you know, I, I, I've been inviting people into this because I truly believe that uh, we're in a season where God is positioning us for a revival, right? Where the revival will start in our hearts, where the flames of our faith will be fanned and, and they'll spread like wildfire. Then we'll see this revival in the church and it'll all pair with this season that we're in when we're, uh, you know, celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so if, if you wanted somebody to take something away from this, I, I, I want you to talk to the person who the flames of their faith have never been ignited mm. or they may be flickering. Um, what do you say to that person as, as I believe that we're entering into a season of revival? Yeah, I think I would say um, to the person who's never had the flame, um, uh, again, like you were saying, I think the most important thing is that we are called to shine Christ uh, in those situations so that even though they don't have a relationship or don't understand it, they can see that, you know, that's something different mm -hmm. and I want that. I yeah. need that in my life. I think that's the, the important thing for them is to show them, you know, there is a better way. You know, there's not just hopelessness in the world. Like there's something else that you can have and can obtain in this world and just try to do your best to show them Christ and let the Holy Spirit um, do what he's going to do. Um, but I say for the believer, uh, I would I would give them hope. I think a kind of a misconception with young Christians is that we're always just going to be on fire for God. Right. Right. You know, we, we always kind of have this joke among pastors whenever we hear about somebody or up and coming pastor, or a young person just came into Christ and they're just on fire. You know, we always joke like, oh, they haven't lived that long yet. Mm -hmm. Because it's the reality we know, and not because we're putting them down, but just we know that life hasn't happened yet. And that's where true faith is grown and shaped and molded. Um, so I would give them hope, like it's going to happen. You're going to have those bumps in the roads because you don't know all the areas in your life where you need God to work yet, mm. right? You, you have, we come to God with, uh, a low sight of what we think, how bad we think we are actually, right? How messed up we are. We say, God, I need you. I'm about this bad. Right. I need you to, you know, shape me, make me new. But then once we come to a relationship with God, the Holy Spirit is like, oh yeah, and this you need to work on and that. And then, you know, it becomes overwhelming. We're like, man, like I really am, right? I'm wretched. I am dirt, right? I'm just dust in the ground. And that can be discouraging for some people because, you know, we kind of get that, that works mindset because that's where we come from in our culture. 
And it's like, man, I just don't add up. And it's like, no, it's not about you. Right. It's about what God has done for you, what, who he says that you are. So I would just encourage them in that way. It's not the end of the world. God doesn't call you to be perfect, but he calls you to be righteous. So how do you grow from those mistakes? How do you learn from, you know, rec recognizing those faults and where you can grow? That's what true a true walk with Christ is. It's not, oh, I'm a Christian now and everything's going to be perfect. And if I lose this fire, that means I don't actually have salvation or right. I'm a bad Christian. It's like, no, you're just human. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would encourage them is just be hopeful. It's a part of our, our, walk, our walk with God. Yeah, and I think um, leaning in in those moments instead of drawing back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like, there's certain things that happen um, within our walk with God where uh, we get to that fork in the road and we say, uh, maybe I should, you know what? I knew I wasn't this or I knew I wasn't that and just let me go on about my business. Or we could say, you know what? This might be the defining moment in my faith walk with God. Like, you know, um, without going into all of the details, I had that moment where I was at the fork in the road and I had to make a decision and the enemy was like, see, I told you, see, I told you. And I was like, um, but Holy Spirit was like, no, Michael, this is the time to lean in. And, and when I leaned in, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. there was just um, this, this deeper intimacy and longing. I think that's what we miss sometimes is that we, we lose the longing that we have for, um, for fellowship with, uh, with the Godhead, you know. And so Craig, um, Pastor Craig, what would you leave the people with um, who are watching this? Um, those who are saying, well, you know, I hear all of this stuff you're talking about, but like, I don't even, I don't even understand any of that. Like, sure. what would you say to that person? Yeah, I, I think what's rolling through my head is that uh, we, especially as Christians, we very much understand great God's grace for salvation. Mm -hmm. um, but then we, as we've already discussed some, we go into a performance mindset. And we try to do the, the rest, the sanctification uh, yeah. on our own, yeah. in our own strength, which doesn't make any sense when you say it out loud, but it, um, it's a reality. Mm -hmm. And I think those times where I've been plateaued and I've run dry, it's because I'm trying to perform mm -hmm. or I'm trying to um, be have this independent mindset you mentioned like community mm -hmm. uh a community with other believers community with with christ and i think uh for me it's been honestly it feels like a besetting sin in some mm -hmm. ways like that that strong like my whole life this um orientation towards worldly success and and god keeps gently saying like no like I've got a different idea of what success is. Mm -hmm. and, and his idea of success is abiding in him. Mm -hmm. That's it. You win when you abide in Christ. Mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the goal. That's the, that's the end. It's not uh, about how much money you have in the bank, how much ministry success you have uh, you know, on your record or your resume. It's abiding in Christ. And um, honestly... I feel like I'm in a, the midst of a bit of a season of mm. plateau. Oh, and that's what he's calling me to right now is, will you just like, okay, you, you got ministry to go after and, and I'm calling you into that. But would you just like abide in me? Mm. Would that be the win for your day and your week and your month as opposed to fill in the blank? Man, I, I, that's so good. Um, abide, like I, I, I just want to take residence mm -hmm. in your love, uh, Holy Spirit. I wanna, I wanna take residence in your fellowship, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Jesus. I, I wanna take residence in in your house, uh, Father God. And, and and I'm not talking about the physical building of the church. I'm talking about being in your presence. Mm -hmm. And this presence, I, I truly believe it's going to spread like a wildfire, and we'll see many people uh, come to know Christ and be saved. And, and, and you know, the reason why the main ingredient exists, you know, is to be a bridge that connects people to this love of Christ, right? It's to be that vehicle because we know many of the people who uh, we reach will never go to a church probably, right? They may never go to a church, but we can be the church, right? As we're supposed to be, the living, breathing church that goes to them. And when we go to them, we take the love of Christ with us. And so as always, guys, 
We do this for food, we do it for relationships, and we do it for Jesus.
coming after me.